This is John J. Bonnert of The Wizard, a.k.a. The Wizard, a.k.a. The Wiz, a.k.a. D-H-E-W-Z-A-R-D, showing off and showing to you how to use the Ruby and Majesty Treasure Team construction kit. It comes with Ruby and Majesty Treasure Team, the full version. And boom, there it is. So the trick to getting to it, once you run the game, hit the one key on the keyboard before it gets to the main menu and it should take you right here. I'm going to adjust the scaling here so the first thing I'll show you press F1 to test. Easy. You're going to need a keyboard and a mouse of course right now hopefully gamepad controls in the future. So F1 to test and then that will work just like the regular game so you can pull up the um, settings if you need to change anything then hit F1 again to go right back you can use the arrow keys to move this uh, grid around on the screen that's just the grid that's gonna hold all the stuff for the room slash level slash puzzle we'll use those terms pretty much interchangeably It's going to be a lot of clicking stuff and then clicking other things. So, the primary controls are going to be you have a palette at the top. You can go through the groups by clicking these arrows. You can select the various stuff from the palette by clicking on it. And you can place it somewhere in the room by clicking somewhere in the grid. You can then click these various properties on the left to change how the various items will work and what their state is, whether they're sort of on or off is usually what that means. And then we can use the right click once we have some things in here to select between different objects in the room. We can set their properties. If you want to delete something, it's the middle click. You can always hold control and it will just be a continuous sort of motion when you hold the click. So if you just click and hold regularly, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything fancy. But if you hold control, it'll just sort of let you paint in. You can also hold control while you're deleting to just delete big chunks of stuff at once. With all these operations too, control Z will undo. It will undo one deleted tile, or I mean, I guess deleted like space or added object at a time. Uh, that means that uh, you can hold control and draw in a big thing and still kind of correct just the end piece um, by just hitting Control Z, just like in lots of programs. <laughs> if you want to duplicate something, for example, if this fan, if you want a second fan that's going to face up, you can hold Shift left click and that will make a copy. If you just want to move it, you can hold shift and click, click the middle click and it will just essentially uh, delete the first one and copy it, but it's, it's sort of like a move. Um, so it'll keep its properties as well when you're doing that. And if you wanted a sort of a default um, fan again, you would have to go and grab it from the palette to get the one that has the default settings. Hopefully most of the parameters are going to be pretty self-explanatory. They will always appear on the left. You can right-click anywhere on the uh, any blank space to pull up the room properties again. You can make the grid go away by pressing G two times. You can see just coordinates by pressing G once. So there's three sort of grid settings. The grid, coordinates, and nothing. There's also V, which will make the values on the left go away. V for value. P will make the palette disappear and come back. P for palette. And then there are three primary modes that you'll deal with um, in the room editor. There is object slash edit mode, which is the default mode and is accessed by pressing E. You can press C to switch to connection mode or T to toggle through three different layers of tiles. So tiles are just going to be inanimate um, cosmetic stuff, um, essentially just these arrows and these staircases. Uh, these will just draw above the floor in the room. 
so we don't need those in right now. So we hit E, we can go back to there. And then there's three different layers for the tiles if you wanted to have like multiple tiles on one thing. Um, tiles and objects can overlap a grid space, but there can only be one object in each grid space. Um, so let's look at connection. That's really the only other thing we haven't talked about. That's just how we connect buttons um, to activate or deactivate various other elements. So when we hit C and we have a button selected or something else that can output, we will get this cool arrow that will follow the mouse. We can then click on something and that green star will appear and it will be connected now. Connections work, you find the thing you want to send out from and then connect it to the thing that you want to receive the connection. So this button is going to send an output to this fan, um, which when it's first pressed will turn it off. And when someone uh, releases the button, uh, the fan will turn back on. If we flip the state on here, then the opposite will happen. The fan will start off and will turn on when the button is being pressed. Uh, you can mess around with the different modes on here to uh, sort of see how the different button modes work. And note that you can only have one thing connected. You can only have one input. Objects can only have one input. So if I had a second button, I can't have a second button connect to this fan. I can have a button connect to this button, but I can't have multiple inputs. I can have this button though connect to as many things as I want, like everything. It could just connect to everything. This is really the only place where you might crash the editor, I'm hoping, is if you create some kind of loop with, um, with buttons. If you have like a button triggering another button and then that one is triggering a third button and that third button is triggering the first one. Um, when you trigger the first one, it'll just create a, a loop um, in the program. So that might crash it, but really nothing else should. So really just kind of, um, once you get the basics, just sort of play around with what you can do. Um, in connection mode, like I said, everything that can send a connection out um, will have that arrow. So you'll know right away. Uh, those all should be right. And almost every item can receive some kind of input. Um, keyholes and, and the gem holes don't. Those will do an output. But basically the walls, the uh, flamethrower, the thing that shoots arrows, all that stuff takes input and you can turn those on or off. Or, and it does various stuff. So check those out. Connection is also how you would connect a teleport to a teleport destination square. Um, you can actually connect that. You can have that set up either way, but most things need to be like the thing you press sends something out, and then the, the thing that receives it is the thing that actually like the status changes. Um, same thing with these enemy spawners. Just play around with it. More details in an upcoming video, basically. Um, so let's talk about editing the uh, these values over here since I covered it briefly. Um, it's mostly just clicking, right? So we can throw down a light here. We can increase the radius by either clicking this plus, decrease it by clicking the minus. We can also just use the mouse wheel while this is highlighted. We just scroll up and down. We can, with a number, just click the middle and just type in a number, 46. If it's a um, true or false, we can just click in the middle to toggle it. And if it's something like the name um, or some other type of text, it just you can click it and then just sort of type in. Um, you'll have to backspace. It keeps what's there. Uh, so this is like room two. Uh, directory is where it will save to. And some of these will have text, but they will actually have plus or minus. So those can be scrolled through. They cannot be clicked. As far as doing that scrolling or clicking, you can hold shift to move by 10. You can hold control to move by 2. And you can hold both to move by 20. If you want to really quickly get to the top value, just hold control and shift and scroll up with enthusiasm. These will also have set minimum and maximum values. So you can't really break anything there either, in theory. <laughs> Let me know if you do break anything. One other neat little trick here that I can show off is that the there's an extended draw mode. So this is really the only other key I think for this screen you need to worry about and that's X. 
If you hit X one time, it will draw certain parameters for certain um, objects when they're selected. So things like the light radius on the lantern will be drawn when you select lanterns. So when it's not selected, it doesn't draw anything. If we hit X again, it just draws for everything that has any kind of extended draw stuff. Um, so certain things like the arrow launchers have a direction. Um, there's a proximity switch that also draws a radius. Um, this is mostly used if you want to like sort of get an idea of what the how the lighting is going to be. So that area within the circle is going to be lit for the most part. Um, if we wanted to make an, a lantern that's the same thing, as we were talking about before, hold shift, left click, and there we go. And so if we hit X now, it doesn't draw any of those. Hit X one time, it just is the one that's selected. Hit it twice, you've got everything. So it just cycles through those three options. Oof. Okay, so let's save this thing and kind of, uh, well, let's get, it in, in, let's get it ready. So in order to actually test this, we would need to have Ruby and Majesty in there. Those can be found on the Dialogue and Characters uh, group. These are just where they would start. You really need these for any type of testing, and you probably need one saved in every single room. Just put them in there. They're like a fail-safe. If the game can't figure out where to put Ruby and Majesty at the beginning of a room, it just puts them there. So when we're testing, that's where they'll always start. Uh, so there they are. Pressing the buttons. I don't know. Going back. So that's the basic um, that's the basic idea there is just um, F1 to test. Put these in there, Ruby Majesty will show up. If you put in multiples, only one of them will spawn. I think it's like whatever is last. So just don't do that. It's not it doesn't help anybody to have extras. Um, <laughs> in the future, it will probably be impossible to have them. But just it doesn't just don't bother. So what we, what we need to do is save this, right? So we we, we named it. We'll give it a directory. This is going to be like test directory. Um, and then we're going to hit F5. And it's going to say saved room to test in the bottom corner. We hit F5 again. It's The file is already going to exist, so it's going to ask us to overwrite. So it's pretty nice that way. Um, we can hit escape if we don't want to do that and then change the name. So if we are using templates or something, that's a good way to sort of catch yourself. How do we load? F7. So F5 to save, F7 to load. This is the loading screen. You just click the directory you want on the left, and then click the file you want on the right. Um, the directories won't be nested, they will just be listed. So if we had like test and then some other directory in there, it would just show up um, under test. It wouldn't be like on the right. Uh, and then we get a cool little preview too, which is neat. We can load some of the versions of rooms that I made for the previous versions of this video. <laughs> So here's another one. We just loaded it. We can test it right away. Hit F7 to load. This screen also tells you what you're working on right now, which is pretty helpful if you have to like load and quickly cycle through levels to change something, etc. Turn this light on. Actually, let's look this up just to kind of have something to do. Save that. So now that button will do that. Real, real simple. I mean, that's really all there is to it. Um, so, that's almost everything for this screen. That's the important stuff. Edit mode, connection, tile. We're mostly going to do edit and connection. Um, palette. Click, just click lots of stuff. <laughs> Control and shift are your friend. Um, F5 to save, F7 to load, and F1 to test. Just F1. You're going to hit F1 a lot. Let's hit Tab now, which will take us to the Layout Editor. So this is a whole separate, uh, not a whole separate editor. It works exactly the same as the previous one. You, the grid by here is default, is defaulted to off, which probably might change in the future, not sure, but you can hit G in here, and it does the same stuff. Turn the grid on. Again, there's this palette up here. It works the exact same way. These are just the rooms, though, that we have saved now. So, like, that's... I don't know what we named the one. Here we go. Room 2 in test. That's the one we just made. And if we place that somewhere, bloop, we get the uh, preview up there, too. Super cool. And that's for whatever is selected. 
we can place copies of room two like all over the place in here if we want. We're not going to do that. We can delete the extra ones just like on the other screen with middle click. Middle click to delete. Easy squeezy. So let's put room two here. Well, actually, let's just yeah, let's let's put room two here, and then we'll put one of those old ones up here. Actually, we'll put this to the to the right. And then we want to set the starting room. So we can change where we start. That's sort of shown with this little S. This is just the first room that will be loaded for this layout. So this is kind of a macro view of putting the rooms together. So these two rooms are now going to be next to each other. We want to name this layout something like uh, test2. F5 to save, just like the other screen. Right, double check that it's saved. F7 to load, same deal. This is a bug I'm looking into. Don't worry about it. We can always hit escape to get out of that screen. We can always just tab back and forth real easy. And when we save this, oh, one other thing here, we can like change the size of this. If we need this grid to be bigger or smaller, we can save this. And when it saves, it also creates the file that the game will actually load. So we're saving a file that is the information about what rooms we're looking at. And then we're also saving a file that's all of the data for those rooms, just in a, in a format that the game can just easily eat up and use. Um, you'll note that F1 here doesn't let you test. Um, that's a, I'm hoping to get that set up in the future, but for right now you would just need to do a full-on um, reset to get there. But it's not, it's not hard to do. Um, I'm going to be adding a, a, a menu to access the different uh, modes and, and to do a restart and various other stuff soon. But right now what you can do is um, come back over to the, uh, the room editor here. We can hit F1 to test it, hit Escape to bring up the menu and just go to the main menu and that will restart the game. So the game will restart. We can move through this stuff and our new stuff should be here under user content. Oh, but I missed something. Well, we'll see. We'll see. This will be a learning moment, a teaching moment. So we'll go to test two. So we'll do a new game. Load that up. Okay, here we go. So here's our first room. Oh, this was the one with the fans and stuff. Now, when we try to exit, we're gonna get that message that you get if you like try to go back in the game. Um, that's just gonna say like, hey. You know, there's no reason to go that way. That just means we didn't actually set the room to exit at all. This is a terrible room. <laughs> we didn't set the room to exit anywhere, so it doesn't do anything. So what we need to do is go and deal with that. So we're going to restart. We are going to really quickly just change the scale. I don't need to switch that. Okay, we're going to load room one or room two what was it called yep this first one because this is the room we're starting in you'll notice these exits are all false so if we wanted to exit to the right like we had in the layout let's load the layout f7 to load is test two okay and that's what it looks like we'll see on here there's this exit at the top of this room of type normal room Room 2 doesn't have any white lines, so it doesn't have any exits. So the only way to get out of it is through a warp. Or we can go and add an exit. Exits are uh, sort of one way, so you don't have to have an exit down. If you, if you have an exit up into a room, the room above it doesn't need an exit down. It can just be a one-way thing. You can guide your adventure along a specific path. Um, because sometimes backtracking can screw stuff up. And backtracking is kind of boring too, so I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> Make like cool loops and things. That's just what I try to do. Anyway, I won't, I won't tell you what to do. Do what you want. So we want that to exit to the right. And this is a stupid room and you would probably put walls around the edges and stuff. But this is just for an example. So we'll set the exit right to true. And then we'll save it. We'll go back over to here. This has an exit up. You'll see this hasn't changed yet, but if we look at it here, it has, and we can actually do that. You don't need to do that. Once we save it, it'll, it'll update as well. Um, but we do need to make sure to save this again so that that file that's the one that has all the good stuff in it actually updates, because that only will update when you save the layout, not when you save the room. 
I can't stress that enough. You need to resave the layout if you change the room in order for it to be something that's in the playable file. Because that playable file only gets made when you save the layout. Okay? Okay. Um, and then we'll put another room up there. So we should be able to start here, go into this room from the right, then go up, and then go up again, but there's nothing there. We'll save that. Tab over, hit F1. See, that doesn't take too long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it quicker, but it's not too bad. And you never have to totally exit the game, which is pretty neat. We'll make start a new game in test one. Now, if we sort of make our way through this dark, nonsensical room, <laughs> hopefully we won't end up in a wall. Okay, perfect. That was totally open. So that's why you might need those coordinates, is to make sure that there's an open space. Um, if there's not an open space, it'll uh, it'll just cause problems. Um, so you would just need to check the next room that the coordinates that you were looking at um, were right. And here's that one light we can turn on and off. Really, really fun. And now we can exit up from here. And then now we're here. So you don't see two, right? We can't go back because the exits are just one way. So you, each individual room just says, you can go out these ways. You can get in there however you make it work with the inputs. So you only have to really work and worry about where a room can go to. Um, and just make sure that if you can come come there from somewhere else, that if it's, you know, by actually going in from another room, that there's a space. Um, if there's not a space, it's just going to crash the game. So the well, characters will just get stuck in the wall, and that won't be fun. So just look out for that. And you just need to check the uh, coordinates. It's really, really simple. So if it's like, you know, 10 height and 11 height, is where the opening is on the left, then there should be an opening on the right of the other room at 10 and 11. That's it. Okay. Um, that's basically it. That file, those files are found in a um, in the sort of app data folder for the game. Uh, so if you you can look up how to find that, it's really, really simple. It's just, um, you can basically just type into Windows Explorer uh, the uh, percentage sign app data, just one word percentage sign, and then go back to a folder that's like local in the app data folder. And there should be a Ruby underscore and underscore majesty folder there, which will have all of the files for the game um, that you make in the editor and the, your save files and also the uh, uh, ENI settings. And the file that will be the one you can trade around is going to be in a folder called, uh, it'll be in that directory, dat, and then the folder user inside of there is where it should be. Um, that's where the dat file should be. So you want to find that dat file. Take dat file. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Take, <laughs> take, take that file. And you can, and if you pass it along to somebody else, they can just put it in that same folder and then they can play it. Uh, that's super obviously a pain to do right now. Um, send me anything you make though, and I'll check it out. And um, in the future, hopefully, we'll get uh, some kind of a system set up through whatever else. Um, it's not an imperative thing for me to, to work on right now. And hopefully, um, with, if we can get up on if we can get the game up on Steam here soon, then then that, sh then that should be uh, where things will be happening. But in the meantime, that's where you can find that. And uh, that's all for this video. More to come soon. If you have any questions right away. Uh, definitely let me know and if you uh, if all of this seems really really cool uh, you can get the full version of the game it's an early access right now and you can get access to the this alpha version of the editor right away it does everything I can do in the game so like dialogue everything um, you can build in the editor yourself uh, so that's all hope to catch you next time thank you